Previously on the Mighty Mo, I depart the Missouri River headwaters on June 2nd in search of adventure and art. By the end of the first day, I see a lot of pelicans, portage my first dam, and meet a man named Hot Roast Jack. I paint some paintings, take a bath, and make it to Canyon Ferry Lake ahead of an oncoming storm. The adventure has officially begun, and morale is high. My name is Steve Snell, and welcome to Adventure Art on the Mighty Mo, a painting show about paddling the entire Missouri River. Over the course of three months, I will paddle over 2,300 miles. I will live in a tent. I will look for adventure. I will paint a lot of paintings. This is Adventure Art on the Mighty Mo. Breakfast. Mmm. Got some oatmeal with blueberries and walnuts. Cup of instant coffee. And a wonderful view. Life's pretty good right now. It's day four. Adventure art on the Mighty Mo. I am leaving Mahogany Cove. Where I made my camp last night. It was a beautiful night despite the rain. Painter Point. Painter Point? Oh man. There's a place right there called Painter Point. But it's spelled with a Y. I should have painted there. I liked my spot though. It was just beautiful. It is a beautiful morning as I depart my camp on Canyon Ferry Lake near Helena, Montana. I am only five miles or so from the dam when a man named Jim meets me on the water with his dogs in tow. Jim paddled the entire river in 2018 and is full of helpful information and encouragement. He gives me a ride around the dam and has a puppy in his truck that is yet to be named. I suggest the name Doug and later learn that the dog is named Steve. Below the dam, I enter Hauser Lake. It is a popular fishing area and relatively small when compared to the other lakes I will cross. A light rain falls as I eat my sandwich, but I don't mind. The landscape is continuously changing and incredibly beautiful, and seems to prove that plate tectonics is a real thing. It like shoots upward. That night, I make camp on a peninsula in the Helena National Forest. All is well until I am woken by the sound of a truck slowly driving by with a voice calling from a megaphone. I'm not exaggerating when I say this, but it seemed like a fugitive running from the law and they were looking for him, promising him that he wasn't in trouble. They just wanted to make sure he was well fed and if he could please come back. Maybe it was a runaway? Now that I think about it, that could be. But when you wake up in the middle of the night, you know, you jump immediately to what seems like a logical conclusion. Now, me, in bed, <laughs> couldn't help but think that, geez, if this guy found me and they were really trying to run away from the law, I've got the perfect setup for them. More than a month's worth of food, a week's worth of water, and a vehicle from which to get all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. Luckily, this person, whoever they were, didn't find me. Probably, I've never dealt with a fugitive while camping before. That's a lot scarier to actually than a bear. Day five. Beautiful day. Coming up on the dam. I see it right ahead. Portaging is an every other day affair on the uppermost section of the Missouri River, and I soon encounter Hauser Dam. It is one of the smaller portages to make, but still takes a considerable amount of time and energy. I do not enjoy it.
Below the dam, the weather is nice, the water is swift, and fishing boats are plentiful. This is trout country, and I do my best to keep out of the way of the fishing lines. I am on my way to the gates of the mountains, a wilderness area so named by the explorer Meriwether Lewis because the river looks as though it emerges from behind the steep canyon walls. So much for paddling. I am only a few miles from the entrance when I am pushed ashore by strong headwinds. I wait, still stuck here, windbound, and then wait some more. The layover is a great opportunity to paint, and I take advantage of the downtime. This is my first windbound experience, and a helpful gauge for me to know when it is no longer safe to paddle. After about five hours, the wind subsides and I make my way into the gates of the mountains. It is twilight when I arrive, and I seemingly have it all to myself. It's just about sunset, and I'm about a half mile from my camp. At least I hope it's my camp. But I think I'm the only one around here that's a human being, at least. And it's absolutely spectacular. The river acts as a mirror, and the colors are otherworldly. There are no roads here, and it feels truly remote and wild. It is the epitome of the romantic sublime, and my only concern is that of bears. You hear that sound? Do you know what that is? I know what that is. That's a bald eagle. I guess um, one thought that came into my head last night while I was waiting on shore for Upper Hauser Lake to settle down a little bit was, um, well, it was just kind of another reminder of what I'm really in for here. And I'm in way over my head, if I'm gonna be honest. I mean, I'm only six days in. Morale's still high, but I'm scared of the big lakes. These are little lakes, like really little compared to Oahe or Sakakawea. Fort Peck will be my first real challenge. I feel like I'm in like the beginner zone right now. And everything's beautiful, the bugs aren't out. The weather's been pretty cooperative. And then just the wind kicks up a little bit and I have to sit on the side and I'm freaking out a little bit. But that's okay. I'm pretty determined to do this safely. And I don't want to die. I want to live. I'm hopeful that this is kind of like my halfway point of life, at least. Grandma Snell's 100 years old. I'm not going to live as old as 100. And I'm not ready to kick it yet, so I need to play it safe on the lakes. It's not done yet. It just keeps getting prettier, that's the problem. Just put the colors where you see it. Eagle. Again. 